Welcome to my video on the Republic Fleet Firetail. In this video we're going to be talking about uh, some of the reasons why the Firetail is a good ship, why this fits not the fit you're supposed to use, and uh, we're going to be looking at a, a fun fight I had. First of all, the Firetail has recently become kind of a ship that everybody thinks is crap, which makes it automatically one of my favorite ships because I like to fly the, the ships people think are bad. It gets me more fights, and um, I get more fun that way because people don't run away from me. They run towards me when it looks like I'm flying a crappy ship. Uh, the truth about the fire tail is that it's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good stats. I fit it out pretty much like a Dramiel, and the fit that I prefer, I'm going to show here in just a second. There we go. That fit right there is the fit that you want to use. It's actually the same fit, but a little bit more DPS than what I was using in this video. But as you can see, it's dual propulsion, good speed, uh, low DPS. That's the main problem with it, very low DPS. And uh, beyond that, just an overall good ship with a shield buffer tank. Um, basically, your, your tank is your speed, your size, your small size, and uh, just some shield hit points and natural recharge. So with that, let's get started with the video. A little bit of background here. I was chasing a Badger and a Rifter through zero zero. They were going gate to gate. The Rifter was scouting. Finally caught up to him. Made a run at the Badger. Made a mistake here. Should have overloaded my Scram. Should have shift click then click. Didn't do it. I'm sitting there spamming F2. Uh, no luck. He warps just as I get into range. So second best option. Better to get a kill than nothing. I run at the Rifter. He's running at me too. You can see by the radio velocity there. Um, we're both wanting each other. I go in. Keep in mind that the fire tail is basically just a better rifter. Um, in most cases, fire tail versus rifter, even a good rifter pilot is going to lose. Um, in this case, uh, it was a really easy fight. He's doing almost no damage to me at all. I'm not really sure what he's trying to do, but there's the manticore. Um, while we got a second, while this rifter dies, this is a really easy fight. This isn't the point of the video. But uh, I just want to say that in PvP you make mistakes. You got to try to roll with them and continue on. You'll see in my videos. I mean, a lot of people don't see the mistakes I make. I see every mistake I make, and in every video I make tons of mistakes. But it's just uh, you know the more you do it, the less mistakes you make, and that's that's the point of practicing, getting out there and doing it. Um, the more you do it, the, the less likely you'll make mistakes. And you can always go back if you record your fights. You can go back and look at them like this. And, really pick apart what you need to work on. But here we go. I'm going to the next gate. I'm really hopeful that I'll catch that badger. Truth is, he's he's like warped to a planet and logged off or something. There's no chance I'm catching that badger. So I just probably forgot to turn off my uh, my, my screen recording here and just warp to the next planet. And I'm just on the next gate hoping to find something. You see here, okay, we got some targets. Pilgrim, Drake, Tempest, Malediction. Now, obviously, in the fire tail, your dual propulsion, uh, you're basically an interceptor with your speed. You fly just like a Dramiel, pretty much. Um, and one of your ideal targets is a interceptor. You see, I landed in that malediction, warped off towards the sun. 99% of the time, when something warps off towards the sun and there's other stuff at the sun, they're at the sun. And just the other night, I went to a system where there was some, you know, Sov warfare deal. They were like shooting at structures or something. And I was in my wolf, so I figured I'm not going to go to where this massive, you know, 50-man blob is. I just warped the sun and sat at zero until a flycatcher warped in on top of me. Um, you know, just perfect isolation there. So let the fights come to you sometimes. Uh, same thing sometimes. You can sit in a belt at zero and, you know, just wait for them. Anyway, so here I'm chasing. I warped to 50 on the, on the sun so I'd have some distance. I didn't want to land on top of them. What do you know? They warped to 52, so... Here I am, right on top of him. I don't want to be on top of him because of that Drake. The Drake's going to probably web me, and I don't want to be webbed. So I immediately hit keep at range 100 to try to shoot out away from him. But the Malediction gets a quick scram and turns off my micro warp drive. That means I'm forced to engage here. I don't have the choice to, to isolate. So I'm turning in. I, I'm going to approach, uh, get that point on the Malediction, make sure he doesn't run away. DPS, overloaded. Got to drop the Malediction as fast as possible. That Drake and Malediction are both going to be putting DPS on me. My uh, my little shield buffer tank is not meant to handle this much DPS. Uh, so this is a bad fight for me. This is bad. You see I'm starting to align out. I'm selecting something away from the Drake. 
So if I start to align, I align away from the Drake and not through the Drake. I want to maximize my range from him because he's got me webbed. And the only way I'm escaping this fight is if I can get out of that web. You see my mistake here. For a second there, I was hitting approach with my afterburner on on the Malediction. Big mistake. I need to be orbiting. I need to keep up my velocity as much as possible to reduce the damage from missiles. The faster you are, uh, the less damage you'll take from missiles. That's why I overloaded the afterburner, but it took me a second to get the speed up. You see the Serb's in now, and he's going to start putting DPS on me. Malediction's down, so right now I'm just wanting to get out of there. I managed to drop the Malediction, so now my Micro Warp Drive works. This is where Dual Prop comes in. Overloaded cycle on the Micro Warp Drive gets a lot of distance. It gets me away from that web, so I broke out of the web range. I'm away from the web now, so I get another cycle of Micro Warp Drive, and now... I just gotta hope that I last long enough to get away from this 24k point range. I do, I warp 43% structure left. So you see right there, that's a, that's a classic escape with a, a dual prop, and I didn't even execute it all that great. Um, but still, you see you switch between the, the micro warp drive and the afterburner based on, on what's the most advantageous. If I was trying to reduce damage in that situation, I would have had my afterburner on, but in that situation I just needed to get out as fast as possible because there was way too much on the field with the Serb and the Drake, and I think the Pilgrim was landing right as I warped out or something. There was just way too much there for me to have any chance of winning that fight, so my main goal was to get out of point range and warp off. Hey, if you like this video then you'll love my Frigate Pro PvP guide. In this video I was talking a little bit about the fire tail and the actual video for this is about three or four times longer. This is just a preview and I wanted to do this preview before I released the, the other one because the other one is an update that I'm doing to my Frigate Pro PvP guide where I just go back every month or so and, and try to as often as possible add new videos and in this one I really wanted to feature the fire tail because it doesn't get enough respect and it's got a lot of potential. Um, like I said before, ships that people think are terrible usually the best ships to fly. Um, it's all part of misdirection. But if you like this, then I encourage you to click the link below this video in the description and go check out uh, the Frigate Pro PvP Guide.